In this video, I am going to provide you with a few reasons why you might not want to attach a deck to a cantilevered floor. Now, this would apply to um, what we're looking at here, something that's near the ground or even a second floor or higher cantilever. And I've seen this done. Now, when I first started working, this was a big no-no. We weren't allowed to do it, and uh, they really... Um, frowned on it and but nobody ever provided us, me with any information on why it shouldn't be done so i'm going to speculate here and uh, just by the things that i've seen built over the years and uh, and i would i also want to point out here is i have only seen one picture i never saw it in person i only saw one picture of a deck where somebody attached it to a cantilever and the entire deck fell down. It came away from the cantilever. Now, this uh, the, the cantilever itself didn't come apart. Now, what I'm going to speculate here is that uh, the ledger, if you take and, uh, you know, if, you, if this is a two by ten we have here, inch and a half by nine and a half. Now, it usually has three nails, but it can have four nails. And in my opinion, when you put some weight on this, it can actually pull the ledger down. So I've never seen this happen. Again, I'm just speculating here. I'm not a structural engineer. So let's go ahead and pull the board back a little bit where we can see the nails. This is all we would be relying on here, and this might not um, work out good. So just wanted to give you an idea. The ledger is going to be my first problem that I have with this type of construction. Next up, of course, would be the obvious. How far away is the cantilever? How much weight is going to be on here? And is there going to be too much weight, more weight than the extended floor joist can actually handle? So in a situation like this where you might have a three foot overhang, or a six foot overhang. I have seen patios attached to, now not a deck, not something you can walk on. I've seen patio roofs attached to the cantilevers. And again, never saw one fall down. I'm not gonna um, um, try and add any drama into here. You know, if you have a, a, a deck that is attached or a patio to a extended cantilever, floor cantilever, and there's nothing wrong with it, I would just monitor it. Keep your eye on it. Don't rip it down. Don't, uh, you know, I don't want to say don't rip it down. I, there could be liability issues there. Tear it down if it's uh, unsafe. How's that? So, again, this is the um, other concern here is the length of the cantilever. How far out is it extending? Is it maxed out for the weight? Or is it only about a foot um, cantilever. And I actually have a picture of a cantilever that I took a picture. I went out to someone's house one time to look at, uh, they wanted a room addition, a, a bid for a room addition. And I went out and took a few pictures of the project. And they had a deck. And this deck actually looks like it was built. I'm going to put a picture here. The deck was actually looked like, it looks like it was built as part of the house. So when I say to don't ever do this. That's not really what I'm saying. What I'm saying is just be aware of some of the problems. If they did it on a new house, there's a very good chance that it was structurally engineered and modified to um, support the weight. That might not be the case if you have an existing structure with just an overhang on it. So here we have our um, shorter span on this side, but our deck, and you can still see the weight, the amount of weight. If we have a longer deck, I think I have, I think this is about 10 feet from here to here. But if you have a deck, you put some, you put a heavy duty barbecue on there, you start adding some weight, or you have a, lo a longer deck, larger deck, you can see where this could actually be a bigger problem. Now, if you're building something new, um, obviously you're going to have an engineer helping you, right? Now, for those of you who aren't, something like this might um, provide you with a little more structural strength, and that would be bolting the deck ledger to the rim joist here and then installing some upside-down hangers. 
these upside down hangers will help with the weight that is pushing down on the rim joist here. The one that's pushing down, this is going to use the hanger that's going to hang that's going to hang on top of the joist to provide you with some extra strength and of course bolting it to bolting the two pieces together is going to provide you with a nice connection also. So again, just throwing this out there. But if you're looking for something that the engineer is going to love to see a little bit better, it's going to be something like this where we have the joist for our deck sitting on top of the wall if it's a second floor or sitting on top of the stem wall that you would have for the floor um, for the existing house. So we have some blocks that are kind of shaped here. They notch over the joist. So not too difficult. You can kind of see what we're doing here. And if the joists were going to be the same size, no biggie. You can make them the same size here. The deck joist probably couldn't be bigger for something like this. But again, here we go with our blocks out here. You can always block this too, block the inside. This might be blocked. You might already have blocks in here that you're either going to have to notch so that you can slide your new joist in or that might need to be removed and then replaced. Now, one more thing I want to point out is that you might be able to install a post and beam type connection like this where it's underneath the new decking. And here I have it underneath the ledger and the joist. You can always move it over and then support it with a cantilever. So again, some more ideas there. Um, just make sure that the post is actually supporting everything, the post and the beam set up. Um, back to the ledger. Give you an idea what it looks like from above. And that is the end of the video.